Hello, everybody. This is Adnan Akhuz. Uh, I am the North Dakota State Climatologist and the uh, State Coordinator for the COCORAS. COCORAS stands for Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. So with that, I'm going to hit my next. Uh, first slide shows what is COCORAS. Um, it is a national, nonprofit, community-based, high-density precipitation network and also a citizen science network. Uh, so you can consider yourself as a citizen scientist. Uh, it is made up of volunteers from all ages and background, just like you and I, and students to uh, retired. Uh, also who take daily measurements of precipitation right in the backyards. Um, and these are all the Kokora stations in the nation. Uh, if you don't want to count and you got to take uh, my word that uh, the currently, uh, as of uh, last week, I, when I downloaded this, there were 70,788 stations, which is the largest network in the United States. Uh, if you zoom into Kokoraz in North Dakota, there are 170 total stations. Uh, there are current, however, they are not all reporting. Um, we joined the Kokoraz network in 2009. Um, also, uh, the Kokoraz run uh, a fun uh, competition called March Madness and usually uh, happens in March uh, along with the March Madness basketball tournament and, and that's why the, the March Madness comes into the picture. Even though North Dakota is disadvantaged in March, usually we have snow and uh, we were able to attract enough number of people to win in 2010, 2012, 2015, and 2018. This is based on the number of participants that we were able to recruit per capita. And also uh, notice that 170, but not all reporting. This is the reason uh, why the majority of the observers are not reporting is the motivation of this workshop. And I assume that uh, some of these people do not know how to report or uh, do not know how to get access to the uh, report that they do and and I assume that would cause a low participation uh, rate so that is the motivation of this uh, of this uh, webinar so uh, the first slide is the understanding your task and and it is very simple and you're, you're supposed to uh, report your precipitation reports daily uh, even if it doesn't rain, uh, we would like to see zero rain or zero precipitation. Uh, zero is actually data, uh, which is which is better than no data at all. And we also would like you to uh, report your observation uh, closest to the time observation time as possible. And zero precipitation is as important as any any type of precipitation. Uh, the, some definitions of the precipitation and rainfall. Precipitation by definition, definition is collective name for falling hydrometeors that include solid and liquid forms of water. So the water needs to be falling in order to, for it to be uh, called precipitation. It could be uh, rain, it could be snow, it could be uh, hail, and all that hydrometeors are called precipitation. And the difference between rain and the precipitation is Rainfall is the liquid form of precipitation. So um, the next slide is the understanding the Kokoraz website. As you see over here, the website for Kokoraz is www.kokoraz.org. Um, and you will get to the Kokoraz website from there. Um, and it usually shows the, uh, the precipitation for that day. And a week ago, and when I download this map, and all these dots are representing a data and, and uh, the zero precipitation uh, is denoted by uh, gray dots and blue dots and some darker blue dots and green dots and other green dots and indicating the, uh, the majority of the precipitation that is falling in the United States looks like it is concentrated in, in, in the diagonal line from Kansas to uh, Ohio and to the north and, and, and more precipitation is falling and in North Dakota nobody is reporting precipitation which is great and as I said zero data is better than no data at all. Um, 
and your first task is to click on the my data entry if you are not logged in yet and that's going to ask you to log in if you click on that button it is going to take you to login page and this is where you log in your username right here and the password and make sure you click on the save login information and then next task is to click on the login and when you do that uh, it is going to take you to your page where you need to enter data notice that uh, this change into my data and you are reporting daily precipitation by default it is going to bring this page so what I would do if I were you after you log in I would just bookmark this page so next time when you go back to the Kokoraz page this page will show up and all you need to do is just enter your data and here is the the date uh, by default it is today's date I downloaded this on the uh, the May 7 that's why it says May 7 um, and make sure your 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 observation time is the default time that you assign when you signed in and I signed it at 7 a.m. and usually most Kokoraz observers are reporting at 7 a.m. in the morning this is early enough um, uh, for folks to get up and do the observations so that they can do their business by 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock and whenever it is and it is usually late enough for most precipitation that falls in the, uh, the evening hours uh, probably ended so you adjust you're able to adjust your uh, date in here you if you're reporting for the previous day you click down um, and you're able to adjust your time in here and you put down your precipitation to the nearest one hundredths of an inch uh, such as 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 whatever that is and then you put down your observation notes in here if you would like to mention drought conditions for example you do it here if you would like to mention uh, how cloudy it is and how cold it is and and this is your chance to be able to write it down here um, and next is uh, monthly zeros uh, monthly zeros is a cool way of uh, looking at your uh, precipitation data in a month uh, it is a excellent way to um, catch if you missed a day for example it looks like I missed um, on Tuesday the uh, May 23rd I purposely missed this so that I can I can uh, take a screenshot uh, this is also where you can easily put if you have a zero precipitation in the past all you need to do is just click on that and make sure you have the monthly zeros in here and make sure you are in the my data entry and when you do that you click on it and it'll do that and make sure you submit and it will submit the day um, another feature is the multi-day accumulation uh, and again you are in my data and you clicked on the multi-day accumulation and this would be a handy form if in case you are going to be gone um, uh, for a vacation for example uh, if you couldn't assign somebody to take the data or record it for you uh, it is possible that you come back from the vacation and then read your gauge and enter as one lump sum data to do that and make sure uh, you click on the right beginning date this is usually uh, the the last the day after your last day of your report uh, this is the first day of accumulation period and this is when you empty the rain gauge you come back from your vacation you read the uh, the precipitation or rainfall in your gauge and this is the day and the hour um, and the next one is the hour of the the rain gauge it was emptied and then and then next you just put that uh, data in here and if you want to have a note in here then you might want to say uh, you were gone for 20 days and and perhaps you don't trust your data um, or uh, it you might want to say that the data is contaminated I see a lot of bird poop in the gauge and something like that anything that you would like to wish to to write goes into your notes and then of course the next is the don't forget to submit your data in here so that is uh, another way to submit uh, this one is going to show you how to read your precipitation uh, you probably have your uh, the gauge uh, outside I hope 
uh, you you mount it on a post and it shows this one is four by four it doesn't have to be for example my gauge in my yard is uh, posted on a two by four um, you you usually put it higher than the post itself to eliminate that the splash in uh, usually rain falls into the uh, the wood and it would splash in if the uh, the gauges align with this so you want to eliminate it by putting your the gauge up uh, your gauge is made up of your funnel, your overflow tube, and the, the measuring tube. The rain falls inside, and that tube is uh, about 10 inch long, but the scale is exaggerated so that the rain, uh, the filling, the entire measuring tube is uh, worth one inches, one, just one inch. Uh, if the, the rain is inside your gauge, the way that you read is, uh, usually when the rain falls, the gravity is going to pull that the water down, but at the same time, the the surface tension in each side of the uh, the measuring tube is going to make that uh, the bulge or uh, the curved surface called meniscus. So the way to read is uh, you read at the bottom of the meniscus. For example, uh, this gauge is showing a little less than 0 0.4 inches of rain. Uh, if that was, I would have to guess is right there. It would be 0 0.3 seven or three eight or three nine and however you interpret that um, and and all these uh, tick marks are uh, graduated by 0 0.01 in each of these uh, tick marks are 0 0.01 inch uh, and you're supposed to read it to the nearest one hundredth of an inch for example uh, 0 0.01 or 0 0.23 or in this case this is 0 0.37 or 38 um, and once you uh, read it and make sure you do write it down so you don't forget it or just keep it in mind someplace in your mind uh, when you go back to your computer you're gonna need that number um, you empty the gauge or, or measuring tube and replace it inside your overflow tube and then make sure you put your funnel down and you're ready uh, for the next day um, it usually doesn't happen in North Dakota, but uh, it is possible that sometimes more than one inch rain falls. So uh, in, in that case, the water is going to overflow into the, uh, the outside tube or what we call overflow tube. Um, and make sure you read then first one inches um, in the measuring tube and empty that and then and put that or the water that was overflow into the overflowing tube inside the measuring tube and add that amount to that one inch. If it is more than two, then you repeat the process. Uh, usually, as I said, it doesn't happen, uh, especially uh, this time of the year, perhaps in the summertime with the uh, heavy thunderstorm, you might have to do that. And the next is uh, looking at your data. So now that you report it and you want to look at your data, as well as look at your uh, data that your neighbor reported. Um, you, the first thing, uh, the one way to do that is to click on the map uh, on the Kokoraz page, and then make sure that you click on the state that you're interested in, North Dakota. You click on that map right there, and then <clears throat> a bigger map will appear, uh, focusing in North Dakota. And I did this in uh, May 7th. And at the time, nobody was reporting any precipitation, which is great because I am looking at all that no precipitation. It is ensuring that that day no precipitation fell in these stations. And you can, you can move your cursor over individual uh, circles. And, and in that case, and the circle is not colored, so it is indicating zero precipitation. I can move my uh, the cursor over this uh, particular station happens to be my station. Uh, CS is standing uh, the, your county abbreviation, Cass County, North Dakota, station number one is reporting zero, uh, no snow, uh, no snow equivalents. But if I want to, I can click on the go to report details and look at the report in detail, which will show everything, including notes. Um, and you can do this in your station or any other station in your neighborhood to see how your data um, compared to the, uh, the other uh, stations in your neighborhood. So this is uh, one way to look at your data. 
And another way to look at your data is in table format. Um, make sure you click on the view data. And on the left hand side, make sure you click on the daily precipitation. And then it will bring up a table. Uh, this table is the uh, precipitation data that is reported up to this time in your entire state. Um, and here are the uh, station numbers. And uh, ND stands for North Dakota. MR is the uh, abbreviation for your county. Um, Batana County, Bowman County, for example, is Cass County, uh, Dickey County, and all these abbreviations are. And the cool thing about this is you can sort them by uh, the column headers. And if I wanted to sort for the highest precipitation, the lowest precipitation, I click on this column. So it will automatically sort uh, the stations that are reporting from the highest amount to lowest amount. If I click it again, it will resort it for the lowest amount to highest amount. And I can do this for any um, of these, uh, the column headers. If you're only interested in your current, your county, for example, you can, you can sort for the county and, and sort for the, uh, the letter A to Z. Or if you click it again, if you, it'll sort it backward. Uh, this, this is one way to look at it. And if you wanted to go back to the map again, you can, you can look, you can click on one of these, either classic map shows dots or a new map that we saw earlier. And, and you can do some additional data. Um, and for example, the conditional monitoring to help us with the drought assessment. And this is very new and I encourage all the Kokoraz observers to do that. And for example, when we had gone through a very uh, devastating drought of 2017, 2018, we were relying on county agents' input uh, that we created with the Google form. However, Kokoraz observers can do that too. And all you need to do is just click on my data here and make sure you click on the condition monitoring on the left-hand side, which will bring this form. And um, you, can, you can click on these drought conditions. If it is near normal, it's just click on here and then add some text in here in the notes. And you might want to say, for example, conditions are near normal. Or if it is uh, mildly dry, uh, you might want to click on that. Uh, but make sure that you, you say something about it in here. If it is a general awareness or municipal, um, maybe you might want to say, um, uh, it, it hasn't been raining for 20 days and the, uh, the grass is looking dry. Um, if it is moderately dry, for example, if it is severely dry, and if you're not really familiar with the, uh, the scale, you might want to click on more information on the scale bar and it will tell you what mildly dry means and mildly uh, moderately dry means or severely dry means. So you can you can look at the conditions in your area and then say something about it. Uh, a drought monitor comes up once a, a, a week. And I am going to show you next what that drought monitor is. And it is a drought monitor really determines how much incentives the farmers in your area should get. Um, imagine that you uh, clicked Submit, and it will bring up uh, a map. And this is one way to look at your um, drought information that the Kokoraz observers uh, put together. For example, this one is, uh, as of now, I downloaded this map just this morning. Um, and, and the website for this is uh, at the kokoraz.org. If you forward slash and say maps, make sure the M is capitalized. Another forward slash condition monitoring. It will bring you to this map. And this map sh will show the current drought conditions. This yellow area is indicating abnormally dry areas. It looks like one observer did say something. And if you wanted to read that, move your cursor over and make sure you click on that. And it will bring this um, pop-up window. And, and this report is coming from uh, Minot. Uh, uh, indicating the, the county and the, the station number. And this person said, very dry but humid in Minot today, which is a great information. Uh, uh, and sometimes when the drought conditions get worse, 
we are really monitoring as well as the drought monitor author is monitoring this these uh, inputs. Um, this is very light uh, drought conditions, but uh, if you wanted to look at the entire United States, uh, this is where you look at it. Uh, the very same map in North Dakota, and, and looking at these, uh, the color coordinations indicating, uh, for example, this is indicating uh, severe drought and moderate light. Uh, some of these are, if it is uh, this color, it is uh, serious conditions are uh, happening, and, and some of these reports are here. And, and, and other thing about this is it has a slider right here. You can slide this to the left. It, it'll take you to the time in the past. For example, if I wanted to slide it all the way to where the, uh, the drought conditions were really worse in North Dakota, and, and I came right here, uh, it is the week of 7-4-2017 to 7-10-2017. This is a one-week snapshot of United States and as you see all these are uh, dark colors indicating severe drought uh, especially in this area it is the uh, exceptional drought exceptional drought is incepted in North Dakota just twice in record once in 2006 and, and another time in 2017 if you wanted to read uh, you move your cursor over one of these uh, uh, severe droughts uh, reported. It looks like one person reported in here and if you click on that and you would be reading for example this particular one is coming from Hazen. Um, uh, the reporter said we are in severe droughts. The June hay cutting was very disappointing on a hay field where the average yearly yield to 60 plus large round bales. We got six bales only. Yes, six, uh, the observer says. The wheat is areas isn't uh, even knee high and it is heading out. The sunflower field next to the house isn't much better. We are now experiencing hot temperatures ranging from 102 now down to uh, the 80s. So the temperature is important too because it is going to tell us uh, even if there's a precipitation, the higher the temperature, more evaporation, so you're going to lose that precipitation too. So I am reading that report as well as the drought monitor author is reading this report that helps us justify the drought conditions in the field. So I strongly urge you to utilize that um, opportunity, what I would say, for the North Dakota farmers and uh, even if you're in the municipal areas, North Dakota citizens. So that's all I have. Uh, this is my information. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself so to see if you have any questions about the, uh, I'm going to bring that back up. Uh, if you have any question, I will go back to the slide that you saw before, or uh, I will just be able to answer any questions. And make sure that you unmute yourself before you start speaking. Abnon, I had a, a question about, uh, is this information given to the rainfall index of the, uh, of the um, crop insurance program? Um, they, they look at that information, and obviously the COCORAS uh, data goes into uh, one of their databases as an input. So they are, they are watching and monitoring the COCORAS data. Okay. I, I kind of assumed that, but I just didn't know for sure. It, it is just one of the inputs. It is not the solely uh, data that they look at. They look at the uh, um, satellite reports, uh, and they look at the co-op uh, network, cooperative precipitation network from the National Weather Service, and obviously uh, COCORIZE is one of them as well. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize that it was important every day to uh, report, um, even if there's no precipitation to put in the zero. I didn't realize that that was quite important. Yeah, it helps us separate um, no data to zero data. And sometimes the reporters uh, do not bother reporting zero, but uh, uh, I want everyone to know that it is very important, especially during the drought, 
to uh, justify that or verify that zero precipitation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we wouldn't know uh, if it didn't rain or the uh, reporter just didn't bother uh, report it. Because I've been neglecting to do that, so that will change. I will start reporting every day. Um, there's an easy way that you learn uh, in the previous uh, report that would be very easy for you to go to uh, this slide, and which shows you monthly zeros. And if you're sure that all the data that you did not report is zero, you can just start clicking on these uh, on these uh, check marks or, or, or in these boxes, and then make sure you submit, and it'll submit all at once. Okay, so that would be at the end of the month, you mean then, or? No, you can do it the next day, or you can do it on the same day. Okay. So okay. this will bypass. This will bypass this this form. So okay. you don't have to put your cursor in here and, and and say zero and then put down zero snowfall and hit submit. Instead of doing that, make sure you click on the monthly zeros on the left hand side, and bring this. Uh, uh, calendar look and data entry form and you will see a whole bunch of check marks over here that you can check or the boxes unchecked but only uh, I want to make sure that you are sure that that day it didn't rain yes and if you're sure that you can start clicking up and and go back all the way to October because your uh, the water year started from October your next um, report is going to come as a percent participation report um, is going to start from October. So make sure you go all the way back to October and start filling in that um, filling in that zero precipitation. Okay. Any other questions? Could you review uh, if we've been gone on vacation for five days or something? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Review that again. I there was. Uh, I thought I had a question there. It was very, very good the way you did it. But could you go over yeah. that again? Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, if you're if you're looking at the multi-day accumulation, make sure you click on the, uh, the my data uh, yep. on the top, and make sure you click on the multi-day accumulation on the left-hand side. Okay. Uh, let me run this. Um, and uh, the next, you're gonna uh, pick a date, the starting date that is usually the day after. Uh, your last report or yes. the day that you go to your vacation yes. and this is the date that emptied your data for example you came from your vacation at 2 p.m. Um, today and then make sure that you select your uh, today's date uh, the five uh, what is today uh, um, 13. 13 and then you change your time from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Um, and then make sure you put down that uh, multi-day accumulation here, and then hit that's submit. Okay, that's what I've been doing wrong. I haven't been going to that bottom box, that multi-day pre precipitation on the bottom. I've been doing that. I haven't been doing that right. So, uh, what about if uh, suppose at your normal reporting time at six in the morning for us, we're on Mountain Time. Yep. And suppose it's. Um, it's still drizzling. It's still obviously continuing to rain, um, and it quits at 11 o'clock. Let's say then you would just uh, plug in 11 as opposed to 6 o'clock, and then put your amount in. No, you don't have to do that. Um, if if you still would like to report on your uh, scheduled time, which I would do, uh, you would go back to the gauge. Um, okay. If it is 6 a.m., uh, yep. you read the gauge. Um, you're going to have to do this pretty fast because you don't want to miss uh, additional rainfall or drizzle in the meantime. It, it only takes um, five seconds anyway, so the, the amount that you're going to lose is going to ne be negligible. So yeah. you read it and make sure you remember that number and put back your gauge immediately. And the okay. new rainfall is going to go to your next day's report, but I you see. make sure the report whatever you read for the current day. Okay. So when we see it, um, and also you might want to, this is where you might want to mention uh, that uh, the rain is still continuing um, as of the observation time. So that's where we know that 
uh, the, the previous day's rain and the next day's rains are continuous. Okay, good, good. So this way you can separate your periods from previous day to the next day. Okay. Okay, that answers the question. Any other questions from the others? It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five guests. Um, in case you're speaking, uh, you're muted. That's why I don't hear you. Otherwise, I'm going to assume there are no other questions. If that is the case, I am going to stop recording. <laughs>